Hello and welcome to Brandy's Poetry Corner. Uh, reading from the Penguin Book of Animal Verse. I have got a K for Kiwi, but that is not how the bird is titled in the title of the poem. Uh, my first experience of kiwis was on kiwi shoe polish when I was a kid, so I still have that picture of the little round tin with the kiwi on it. But they are, of course, real birds, and they live in New Zealand, and they don't fly. Um, this poem is written by someone called Robert. I'm saying sward. It's like sword, only with an A. And it just says 20th century. And the title of the poem, which is quite long, is The Apteryx 1 slash 35 of Webster's Dictionary and New Zealand. So there you are. The Apteryx by Robert Sward. The inflected apterisk, or kiwi, would appear to be a rudimentary, an essentially Webster bird. The apteryx, from the Greek a, pteryx, does not fly, and in fact, that's all regard a need for flight. Flat breastboned, hen-sized and scratchy, the apteryx stands on two declining and unlikely chicken legs. It oozes for food through a long, thin, reed-like beak. Insects, snails, crippled fleas and berries. The nostrils of the apteryx are at the last half inch of its beak and the bird, not quite extinct, survives under government protection. It reproduces slowly and in public burrow hiding. If its hairs were feathers, oscillated, aphrodisiacal, the sleepy marginal asterisk-styed apteryx could, conceivably, strut, cock and play the peacock. However, with its one hint of a tail and greyish, short, shag-brown hair, the apteryx would seem content to oo, and its beak alone, apt and straight, endears it to one. But when it curls itself, extinct within its sleeping bag by day, in whiskering its oo, the apteryx returns upon the government and a webster of it all. Thank you. I want to go and look up pictures of kiwis now online after reading that poem. For other poems read by me, look me up, Brandy Pearson, on YouTube. Thank you.